Hi, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen, backyard, and beyond. And thank you, Steph, for that nice introduction. So I have been um, involved with the Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine, or Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine, also known um, as AWESOME, for a long time. And I'm very excited about that opportunity. I'm also employed through Advocate Aurora as a family um, nurse practitioner and do both primary care and integrative consults. And I'm a clinical professor, adjunct clinical professor of medicine with the UW School of Medicine and Public Health. So I'm very fortunate to get an opportunity to both uh, be a clinician as well as education with regard to integrative medicine with our residents and medical students. So today, what I'm going to be uh, sharing with you today is on a, a product that I make very uh, frequently. I use it um, for myself and my family, give it to friends for gifts, and I also recommend um, patients using it as well as giving them the recipe of those that are interested as well. So what um, I'm going to share with you today is a recipe called elderberry syrup that is kind of the additional as well. I just need to ask um, Steph a question for a moment. I'm seeing everybody's face rather than myself. And I think it would be helpful for me to spotlight that for myself. Can you help me with that? Um, or yeah, let me, I usually can do this. So just before we keep going, so it will help me, I think, to be able to see a little bit more of what I'm doing. You know, I am not sure how to spotlight you in this version of the Zoom. So, I got it. I got okay. it for myself. Okay, thanks. I figured it out. So anyway, so today the, the, um, the star of this recipe is elderberry. And elderberry is also known as Sambuca nigra. So that is the botanical name. And in the United States, we oftentimes use what we call Sambuca canadensis. Canadensis means of Canada, but most of the the um, elderberry that we have in North America is um, canadensis versus the European um, elderberry. So this is elderberry that I've actually gone out and wildcrafted. That means that I've gone out um, into the wild and found um, my own elderberry tree or bush. And um, you wanna make sure that if you're going to be using anything from the wild that you know how to both identify and safely um, identify it and use, um, uh, and, and also ethically collect that as well. So hold on here for just a moment. All right, so that is elderberry. These are um, little uh, blue, blue, dark blue, almost black berries, and it's really important for you to make sure that if you are going to collect them on your own to safely identify them, but also you wanna know that you wanna harvest them when they're in this state. You don't wanna be getting them when they're green or red. They need to be in this dark, rich purple, which is showing that it's both ripe and it's got the anthocyanins, which are what give it its, much of its medicinal properties, including antioxidant and antiviral. So you can also buy this and uh, at your various local health food stores or online. And uh, so that is the star. She is the star of our, of our recipe today. So uh, I have about 30 cups of that in my refrigerator or my freezer. Then we have these beautiful um, members of the Zingerberaceae family. This is turmeric. And a lot of times people call it turmeric root. It's actually a rhizome. That means it's an underground stem. And you can see that when you cut it, on my camera, it's picking up that it looks yellow, but in fact, it looks really much more like a carrot when you see it in, in person. But it looks kind of gnarly. And then it's a uh, family member is, is ginger. Oftentimes people will call this ginger root. It also is an underground stem known as a rhizome. This is Zingiber officinalis, and this is curcuma longa. And then I have it cut up into sliced um, and kind of uh, almost diced into smaller pieces. So then when you put it into the, the pot, you're gonna have increased surface area for the extraction um, into the solvent. And in this particular case, we're using water as a solvent 
And one of the reasons we use water is water is um, easily available for most people. And we're going to be using a process called decoction. So decoction comes from the French word decoter, which means to simmer or boil. And you bring it to a boil and then you simmer it. One of the reasons you also wanna use water, and um, again, it's very available, but you're also going to um, be able to use that all around the world. And it's going to extract the, with the, the water solvent, it's going to extract the water soluble uh, plant chemical constituents that you're looking for. It doesn't have good preservation. So when you do use water, you wanna make sure that you either use your product up fairly quickly. Um, and if it's not used within the first day, then you wanna refrigerate it for about uh, three to five days and then it's perishable just like any plant product is and then it needs to be thrown. But by adding the syrup part to it, that will increase the preservation of it. And we'll talk more about that. We then have cinnamon stick here. Uh, this is Cinnamonum verum. It's also known as Ceylon cinnamon or true cinnamon. And this has antimicrobial properties, um, anti, um, and it tastes really wonderful. It's got a lot of arom aromatics to it. And those are the essential oils. I just wanna back up a little bit with the ginger and the uh, turmeric. These have antiviral, anti-inflammatory properties. Turmeric also has a lot of anti-cancer properties. Many people know that ginger has anti-nausea properties. We're not using that necessarily for that purpose in, in this particular recipe. We also have some clove bud. And this, um, I don't know if you can really see that very well, but most people know what that is. So these are all, um, this is dried clove bud. And it is also known as Zygium aromaticum. Nice uh, aromatics. Again, it's the essential oils that are in the, um, sorry, hold on, please. Just got interrupted by a phone call. So it's an aromatic. It has a lot of antimicrobial properties. Many people know it for its analgesic properties as well. Sometimes people, when they have a dental abscess or a dental pain, they might use the essential oil and put it on until they have an opportunity to get for dental care. Then we have black pepper uh, corns, also known as Piper nigra. And this has an alkaloid in it called piperine, which enhances the absorption of other plant chemical constituents or the phytochemicals within the product. Then one of my favorite stars is star anise. And uh, she is also known as Illicum uh, verum and has uh, antimicrobial properties, digestive uh, benefits. And it also has something in it called shikimic acid, which is a intermediate product that is part of making Tamiflu. So that's another reason I put it in. It does have like a licorice flavor. So you don't need to uh, put it in if you don't like it, but I put these in both for the flavor and for the medicinal actions as well. Then we have cardamom. It's also known as Eleteria cardamomum. And these are cardamom pods. Let's see if I can bring my camera down to better show you. I don't think I can. but these are the little cardamom pods. I don't think you can probably see it very well, but most of you probably are well aware of that. Inside are the seeds, and she's thought to be the queen of herbs, and black pepper is thought to be the king of herbs. Then over here, I have, um, this is actually not a plant. This is called cardamomums uh, lucidum, and this is um, a mushroom. And this has immune modulating properties as well. So you can see that we have a wide variety of plants that we're going to put in. Um, I wanna show you a couple more. One, we have lemon. This is, uh, this, um, sorry, it's, it's a citrus limon. And we're gonna be using just the juice of it. And I put that in for the vitamin C benefits as well as for the pr preservations with that as well. Now in this, um, I have my coffee grinder, which you, it doesn't look like it's showing up from what I can see, but what I have in there is a stragulus root. So that's an actual true root. It comes from the pea family. Also um, the, uh, the botanical name is um, a stragulus membranaceous. 
and um, they I don't think you can see it. Sometimes people see this where it's in the tongue blade looking where it's been pounded out and flattened. This is actually the small little roots and it's cut and sifted. Now I have it in my coffee grinder and I already took my coffee grinder and I just post it a little bit to increase the surface area. Everything that I have um, here, then like for example, the cinnamon, I'm just gonna break it up a little bit and I'm gonna put it in with my mortar and pestle along with my cardamom and my star anise, it's all going in here. And you could put this in a coffee grinder. If you use a coffee grinder, What's really important is that you, if you don't wanna have coffee taste in your herbal medicine product, you probably wanna use a designated coffee grinder for that. And if you don't want herb flavored coffee, then you might probably wanna use a designated one. So you can see, I just put this in my little, um, my, with my mortar and pestle, and then I'm just um, smashing it up a little bit, grinding it up a little bit, to enhance the surface area, which allows then the water, which is the solvent, that's going to be the, uh, extracting the plant constituents um, into the water. So that just enhances that. You can also take and mash up your elderberry a little bit more too. So I'm just going to take this over to my pot over here. And what I'll do is I'll just, as I do this, I'm pouring my elderberry in. I poured in my various spices and herbs. Now I'm going to be putting in my turmeric and my ginger rhizomes. And then I'm going to be putting in my Ganoderma lucidum, also known as reishi mushroom very good for immune modulating benefits. And we're going to just be adding in the astragalus root that has been pulverized a little bit. And then I'm going to be bringing in some lemon, citron, lemon, limon. And then you just take water and it's a good idea to take um, filtered water if you can or distilled water when you're making herbal products just so you have it more pure you don't have some of the chemicals that may be in your tap water. And then you just pour that into your pot and I have four cups of water there. And then what you're going to do, so we said again, this is a decoction. So we're using, um, the decoction is used where you bring the, uh, the water to a boil with all your plant products. And this is very similar to what you would do if you're making a, a soup such as chicken soup, or if you've ever made mulled cider before, it's a water-based um, solvent. So even though it's apple cider, it's still water, or you could use a dairy or a non-dairy milk product to do a decoction as well. So when you generally use a decoction, you are, going to be using, bringing it to a boil, and it's used oftentimes for hard or um, dried or dehydrated plant products. So not only are you extracting the plant constituents from uh, in the water, but you're also rehydrating the plant products as well. So what we did is now we've put all of those plants in and the plant parts into the water. We're turning it on, we're gonna bring it to a boil. And unlike if you are making a tea where you would just pour water over your, your tea bag or your plant part and then put a lid on it and steep it, we're actually going to bring this to a boil. When it comes to a boil, then we'll turn it down and we'll simmer it. And then what you do is you, let it simmer so it reduces the, your product now down to about a half. And so then once you're done with that, you strain it and then you add your honey, which I'm going to now, I have another pot going that was, it's going and smelling absolutely beautiful in my kitchen with the ginger and the cinnamon and the clove. You can almost imagine it yourself if you think of mulled cider, it smells very much like that. So it's really delicious um, cooking away over here. 
so now what I have, you probably can even see the steam coming out of that. It's just, um, it's done. Um, so it's been reduced to about a half and that can take anywhere from 20 minutes to, to um, a couple hours, if you, depending on how you're doing that. And then what you're, what you, what I didn't show you is you do wanna have the lid on it initially. So that's gonna help with the heat. And then once you take the lid off, and I did this before, but I let the uh, condensation come back down in because that's going to be where there's um, there's some essential oils in there that have chemical constituents that you want to have come back in. That's also one of the reasons like if you make a cup of tea to, versus just putting a tea bag in or the plant part in and leaving it open to the steam and let it go up, you're actually going to get more benefit from the plant if you let the, the steep with the, the lid on it. Okay, so this is the next part of what we're doing here is you just take, you can take um, cheesecloth, you could take linen, um, like a, a linen cloth, which is a little easier than cheesecloth. Cheesecloth, you have to use a few layers or you can use this milk or nut bag that I have here. Um, I am not going to use that. I'm just going to show you with, so I have a bowl. And then I'm just going to be pouring into the bowl the decoction with all of the plant parts. So I just want to say that sometimes people don't use the whole plant part and they might use the powder. And then what they do is they might take the whole berries and everything and they'll put it in a food processor or a blender. And then they just add their honey to that. I usually always strain my decoction and then I... Um, and then I uh, compost my, my leftover plant parts. So what I'm doing here is just putting that all into the strainer. So I have a very nice um, fine mesh uh, strainer. So it's very fine and that makes it strain very uh, easily. That's pretty much how I do it. Now, sometimes people will use a herbal press or they might use a potato ricer and then they'll put it in the, their bag or their linen or their um, other fabric that they're using to help with the filtering process and they'll press it out to really press it. I seem to be able to to um, press it out pretty much on its own. So you probably, I think you can see this, I'm gonna bring my camera down here a little bit more. So what you can see here is that I have all of the plant part here, and then you can see that it's straining it. And then once you have that strained and it's cooled down a little bit, we're gonna be adding honey to that. Now the honey is, so now what we have is our, our decoction with all of the plant chemical constituents extracted in here. And as we talked about at the very beginning, the star actress of this recipe is the elderberry. And the elderberry is making it a dark purple um, color. And that's what I am, I think you probably can see it. It's really, really deep, rich in its anthocyanins. And it smells absolutely wonderful. So then when we're done with that, we I'm going to just show you here with a canning jar, just because it's still pretty warm. And we can, as you probably can see this coming in here, you can probably see the dark colors of it. And I made a little bit smaller batch just because I'm going to add that other batch to this, but you can probably see this beautiful dark, dark purple, um, beautiful decoction. So it's not quite cooled down enough, but I'm going to show you what we would do is 
using, this is honey, and honey is, this comes from the Western honeybee known as Apis millifera, one of the best herbalists that we could get. And this is local uh, Wisconsin honey. It's raw and it's non-pasteurized. And so the reason I don't want to put this right in at the same time right now is the is this is still pretty warm. And but what you're going to do is you you just pour that in to the solution that you have with your decoction. You add the honey. The honey is going to enhance the flavor. And as Mary Popkin Poppin said. Uh, sugar makes the medicine go down. And so it also has an, uh, healing properties to it, including antitussive for cough, but it also has antimicrobial properties as well. Now, some things that you really wanna be thinking about when you're using honey is from a safety standpoint, it should only be used in children over the age of 12. So don't use it for anybody under the age of 12 months, I meant to say 12 months, so not 12 years, 12 months. So otherwise they could be at risk for um, uh, botulism and that is a real risk. So if you want to make a syrup without and use it on a younger child, you could use making a simple syrup and add that to it. You could use agave, you could use a, a um, maple syrup uh, because that's been heated in the process and killed off any botulism potential risk for that. So that is um, how you would make your beautiful, it seems like it's cooling down pretty quick. So actually I think I can go ahead and add this. So you're just gonna add your honey into here. And sometimes I have been very much uh, fortunate and been gifted from a friend of mine who is a beekeeper. And she has, she and her husband have given me some of their local local honey. In fact, she gave me some recently and said, can you pick me some elderberry? So she gave me a jar and then I in turn uh, made elderberry syrup and used some of her elderberry syrup, or excuse me, her honey um, and gave it back to her. So that's as simple as it is. And now this is really taking your um, food into your medicine and your medicine um, as your food as so many people know about Hippocrates uh, telling that and how we like to do that in integrative medicine. Once you're done with that, you wanna always make sure that you take, this is gonna to need to get mixed up and, and I'm sure you can see what we would, how we would mix that. But once you're done, you wanna make sure that you label your container with what's in it, including the elderberry, the water, the honey, and all of the various other herbal products. Pot, parts, uh, herbal parts that we were just talking about plants. So then you want to label it. And then I mentioned before that as a decoction, decoctions only last for a few days, um, if, even if they're refrigerated. And the honey or the sugar or the syrup is going to make it last longer. So it could potentially last as long as um, maybe two to three months. But with anything whatever you're consuming, always use good common sense that if it looks like it's off in any way, it looks off, it smells off, it tastes off, something doesn't seem right, you'd wanna toss it. And in the meantime, uh, what you'd wanna do is really use this both preventatively and therapeutically for respiratory infections. One friend told me that she actually bought a bottle and when you get a whole quart amount in here, it's probably worth about $70 or so if you went to buy this on um, pre-made. But if you take this elderberry that you've already made before, and you can use probably one to two teaspoons on a child or a tablespoon on an adult. Mmm, yum. All those delicious herbs and spices that we added to this not only therapeutic, but yummy. So you can use this on pancakes or waffles if you'd like to, if you think about it as a syrup, syrup that way. You could add it to your smoothie. You could take it straight off the spoon as I just demonstrated. You could um, make another, take another step and you could make little elderberry gummies. 
And I think these are little monkeys actually, but you can get one of those silicone molds and then you would add pectin or something to solidify it. And they're kind of really firm, almost like those jello, um, finger jellos that uh, people would make. And lots of times kids of all ages really like um, elderberry, elderberry gummies. Some people also take and they'll, they'll make um, a jam out of it or a jelly. And so there's just really all kinds of things that you can do with your elderberry and your elderberry syrup. And I hope that coming into my kitchen and into my backyard and beyond was helpful for you to learn some things that you can bring into your own home herbal apothecary. So thank you, Becky. Thank you so much. You, you, there were questions starting to flow in um, and I feel like a lot of them you actually the answered as you um, talked about it, um, like the amount of honey that was used to make it into a syrup and um, and and different ways you could take it. Um, doesn't seem like there's a very much limit to the different ways you could use that syrup. Uh, unfortunately, Steph's computer froze. So um, anyway, I'm Molly Burke. I'm director of online education and have um, had the pleasure of working with Becky for many, many years, um, especially on iHelp together. And um, that was just uh, really enjoyable to watch. I know uh, people want the recipe. We will be sending out the, the recipe with the recording of the session so everyone can take their time and, and try it on their own. Um, if people are just saying thank you and, and it's wonderful. Um, uh, there's only a couple minutes, but if there are any questions, please do put them in the chat. And then, um, of course, I, and it's great to see all our alumni out there um, that have also joined us here. And uh, I'm here as well. And um, I know Becky can answer a lot of questions too. We were gonna um, highlight and talk about our integrative health and lifestyle program, which um, has a new uh, class that runs every January. Um, so our, our next class, our next cohort um, is starting up very soon and their um, applications, you can still get an application in. We only run it once a year. So um, uh, it's a interprofessional, um, very diverse professional, uh, interprofessional online program to learn the breadth and depth of integrative health and lifestyle approaches. And it weaves self-care throughout the entire program, which is what um, Becky and I worked on for a long time and uh, very proud of that. Uh, we want our students to be practicing self-care, to be healing themselves in order to um, be fully present and there for their patients and clients. Um, we know how high burnout rates are with healthcare professionals. And um, one of the nice things that we've seen with the research on our iHealth program is that it actually decreases high risk for burnout. Um, and that pe many m our students do adopt many wonderful self-care practices for themselves. But um, uh, thank you, Becky, so much. Just a, a round of applause. You use your reaction button. Um, you'll get all the information um, in an email. Um, and I'll stay on if anyone has questions about the iHelp program. We also have a, a Q&A Zoom. Um, that you can register for coming up next week that I'll, I'll do a, a more thorough deep dive into all the wonderful elements of the program. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah. Thanks, Becky. Uh, I would like one of those bottles in the mail, please. <laughs> okay, I'll just put it through a fax machine. Uh, one thing I did want to just say too, and thanks, Molly, for that great information with regard to I hope I would strongly recommend it if you qualify and you can look on the online or talk with Molly or the, the team to find out more about it. I just wanted to say this recipe is an expanded version. I add a lot of things to it for the various reasons that I like the flavors and I like the medicinal properties, but boy, you can just use elderberry water, some cinnamon, and you could use cinnamon powder versus the full uh, cinnamon quill, um, and you could use maybe some clove powder. And that's as simple as it could be. And then you add your honey afterwards. So I added all kinds of things just because I do. And also I wanted to share, share something that's a lot of fun. Perfect. Thank you so Thanks. much. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone.
someone asked, where do you get the elderberry? <laughs> I know, I know you can go out your back door and harvest some. Can, can you pick that up at a store? Yeah, you can get it at your local health store. You can get it at Mountain Rose. Star West is another company that you can get. I think you have to have an account with them, um, but you can get it online. I was kind of surprised. It's kind of pricey. It's two dollars an ounce. I was going to go buy some just because I thought I would use the dehydrated versus the fresh frozen. And for five ounces, that was going to be ten bucks, which was, you know, a cup and a half. And I thought, well, I have like twenty or thirty bags of it down in my grocery, my refrigerator. So <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me because I'm sure if any of you have used like a, a store bought elderberry syrup off the shelf, like. I have for my children over certain seasons, it's, you know, $20 for like an eight ounce bottle. So it, it has some great, you know, accessibility if you can, if you can make it yourself for sure. It's fun. Yeah. The farmer's market. That's a great, great tip too. Yeah. Well, thanks again. It was great to see everybody.